Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa, cindyschulte.com, and Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Julie Nelson. Good morning, I'm Chris McGruder. Yes, we're so (laughs) glad you take the today to join us in the next half hour. So grab your coffee, your tea, and pull up a chair and join us here at the Catholic Woman Now coffee table. Yes, and I also want to say you can also grab your hot chocolate. That does sound good. Mm, Mm, Today it does, doesn't it? So today on the show we're talking about Advent. It's it's coming up. It's this Sunday. It's the first Sunday of Advent. So when it comes to Advent, it's that question, Chris. Where are the candles? <laughs> That's the question. Huh? That is the question. You know, every year I'm like thinking I, have, I forget to look up my candles to make sure I have candles ready for that wreath on Sunday. <laughs> Do you find that? You no. Know, you know, what I find is that I don't light them often enough because we're going and coming so much that they don't get lit. So I use the same ones from the year before often. Oh, well, you know, and then you get the, pro- then you get the, the one candle that you, the first Sunday, yes. it gets down to a nub yes. and then you've got three bigger ones. And it's like, oh, what do you do? I do have that problem. <laughs> what do I you do? I do have that problem. <laughs> And, you know, it's also, do we have to use pink and purple? Or some people are switching it up and going to red and green kind of Oh, thing. they are. Mm-hmm. No, no. Or just any other color. We're going to answer that question okay. today in the okay. show because we're going to talk about things Advent. We're going to talk about preparing your heart for Advent through joyful penances and yes. the traditions of the church from the past and where we're at now with that season of Lent, Advent. And, um, and how to live a balanced Advent. Yes. How to say no without going crazy because I think that's really... Every year, every year, I think in my head, okay, Advent's coming, holidays are coming, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to say no to this, and it's hard when it comes. Mm. When the time comes, it's hard to say no. Mm-hmm. So because it's all so fun. It's all good, it and is. we see the, the, the need, and it's good for yes. it. So we're going to give you some uh, helpful guidelines on how to say no and to make your Advent holy and prepare your heart and your family as well. Mm. I can't wait. I know. We're going unplugged, people. Yes, this is what we call it. (laughs) And we've got, on December 7th, we've got the Dinner in December. Dr. Ray Grandy's coming. He'll be at the Embassy Suites with us. 6.30 that night. They're going to start a little bit early. So if you can come out, people, it's always a great event. It is. And Dr. Ray Grandy is one of the favorite programs here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And uh, tickets can be bought at iowacatholicradio.com. You'll be there. I'll be there. And we'd love to see you there. That's right. Come sit with us at our tables. Hey, you know what? We need to start with prayer. Let's do that. Name the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got some cool things happening in the world, in the secular world, with Christmas this year. Yeah. I'm that's excited. Right. Well, yes. The Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, are going to be singing at the White House Tree Lighting, which actually happened last night, but it'll be televised on Sunday on reels and or ovations are carrying that. So it's so wonderful to see. And they're singing songs from their latest CD, Yezu, Joy of Man's Desire. Well, and you know, Sister, um, am I going to say this right, Assumpta uh-huh. was just here about a week ago when she was speaking. I got to hear her speak. You got to hear her speak. Right. So she's, she's one of the goddess. founders. So yes. it's kind of cool. I'm like, oh, and now she's going to be on television. You How know, they kind of show up everywhere. You yes, know, they're they a little do. bit, they're, they're very, very, take that evangelism to the far ends of the world. They yes. really do live that out. You know, and I was actually kind of surprised that they had only founded their order just back in the 90s. 21 years ago. Yes. And, four and four nuns. Yep. Over 100 nuns now, like 140 or something like and they're that. they're joyful yes. and they're young women yes. and excited about being, serving the Lord and yes. being the brides of Christ. You yeah. Know? So you know what, friends? December 2nd at 9 p.m. Central Time. It will be telecast on Ovasion. Excuse, that is right, isn't it? Ovasion yeah. uh-huh. and Reels. Um, those those 
uh, channels. Yeah, so. Reels is R E E L Z for those who are not familiar with that, mm-hmm. so, which I wasn't. So, mm-hmm. and we got a great thing happen here at Catholic Women now. We have a giveaway for Ad. Thank you for Advent. It is the book Gaze Upon Jesus Experiencing Christ's Childhood Through the Eyes of Women, and it's edited by Kelly Walquist. And Kelly was on the show a couple months ago telling about this book, and I know we've been getting some feedback. Some of you are doing some of these studies. If you want to get a chance to win, enter at Catholic Women Now Radio Facebook page and write a comment in the comment section of how you found Catholic Women Now. Contest ends at midnight tonight. Uh, Friends, Julie's getting back into Facebook again. Yes. So... (laughs) We want this giveaway to go really well. So go on Facebook and make her happy this coming Advent. Well, we enjoy hearing from you and how you find us because we'd love to connect with you. And we want to bring you what you want to hear, what your your topics that are on your heart. And just as a reminder, the Gaze Upon Jesus book is about Visio Divina, which is where she has some beautiful paintings in the book that the Vatican allowed them to come in and photograph um, for you to meditate with. So it's it's a great book. I like, I like the reason. the writing of oh, what's her name Stephanie uh, I'll find it here Lansdom. She is a fictional writer, so mm-hmm. she's a biblical fiction writer, and her stories are fun to read. Well, she really takes you into the portrait. Yeah, it's a composition. You're, you're mm-hmm. there at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. that. It I is beautiful. That. If you're a visual person like I am, you'll like this book. <laughs> it yeah. has pictures in it. Well, who, can, who does not like Vatican art? Yeah, and really, it's beautiful. Right. That's right. Beautiful. And thank you, Cindy Schulte of Farm Bureau Financial Services, for underwriting our show, Catholic Women Now. Cindy's an authorized independent agent, and she and her team provide health insurance options from Wellmark, Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Iowa. She does a great job of making insurance simple for us. As a matter of fact, we're going to have her on and have her kind of clear up some things. Yeah, we're working on weeks. trying to get her scheduled. I'm, I'm working on that with her. Yeah. So, yeah. She yeah. said there's some new insurance plans coming out in the first year. Stuff that people are having a hard time figuring out. So we'll have her on to help us clarify all that. Cindy Schulte is cindyschulte.com on the web or 515-226-2111. There you go. Yes. And we are going to start discussing Advent. Yes. Kind of already been doing that. Right. But a little bit further into it. Um, first of all, my question that we were kind of discussing was, is Advent supposed to be a penitential time like Lent? Because or, it's color purple, right, violet. Right. Or not. And, you know, what? What I when I was looking back, I found some kind of history on Advent. And during the reign of Innocent III, which would have been 1198 to 1216, the vestments during Advent were actually black. That's hard to believe. I know. I, 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 ooh, I, know. I don't know if I could do that now. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And pictures and statues were covered in churches. Organs were, they didn't use the organs. That reminds me of Lent. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah they Lent. didn't even use flowers. They were banned, actually, yeah. from churches during that time. So the Advent liturgy, um, you know... There was a requirement to fast. They didn't, you know, there were a lot of, um, it seemed kind of dark, on, honestly. It does. Like, I mean, you're talking about yeah. this. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I know. But it was kind of designed to remind us that we need to repent to prepare for the holy season coming up. And that was the idea behind it. And then, you know, so secular um, observances of Christmas now, you know, have kind of rushed in to fill that void of the penances that used to take place. I think they've kind of gotten a little bit out of hand because they've kind of moved us into well, more materialism. It but, is. It feels like a machine we're yeah, fighting with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Advent and fasting, um, Advent fasting and almsgiving, you know, are, are the way we behave and and um, prepare for Christmas is a way that kind of keeps us holding things in their proper order. You know, mm-hmm. it keeps us having a perspective of material goods um, that helps us to kind of offset the excesses that come with prosperity. That happening in our culture these days yes and i think that that's kind of something we could really enhance and bring back more mm-hmm. is that fasting and that detachment from things and giving more to the poor or, and i like something pope francis did said years ago is like when you go to buy something you know maybe you can afford the more expensive one but you really don't need the more expensive item well so why not buy the lesser expensive one model or whatever that and then give the excess to the poor that I like. Isn't I that, like that? I've really kind of kept that in the tuck and back of my mind right. when I go out and purchase things now. Right. I like that. Well, secular celebrations can seem somehow um, obligatory. You know, it's almost like we feel like we have to have that Christmas party or we have to put up those lights. Uh-huh. You know, so somehow they that's become the essence of Christmas. We don't want that to happen. We're going to talk later on how to work right, that in your right. life. So the idea, though, is, you know, if, if you do some of the, you know, we're not going to get rid of Santa and we're not going to be putting on sackcloth and ashes kind of thing. But um, there is a 
crucial difference between Lent and Advent. We've got Christmas doesn't have the passion preceding it, you know, um, like Lent does. But the penitential observances of Lent always had a festive character to them, despite the fact that they were penitential. So the idea was to just contain the excitement before Christmas. And this kind of reminds me of what my mom and dad kind of had us do when we were little, but contain your excitement before Christmas and then use that energy in preparing for Christ's coming so that your penances are joyful. Yes, you know? yes. And I remember, do you remember this? When you couldn't wait for Santa to come. Oh, absolutely. But it was like you'd be counting I down still, the days. I still can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be counting down the days and you couldn't wait for that to come. But it was like you were holding it in. You right. were holding it yeah. in. And you were, I remember doing things like, you know, putting money in boxes, you know, or oh, yeah. doing things, you know, to help other people and, you know, kind things, visiting people when you were caroling or whatever. And then all of a sudden Christmas came, but they were, they were joyful penances because you were preparing for Christ's coming. And I think that in today's world, waiting is a very hard thing because everything's so instantaneous. Oh, goodness, yes. And so for children to learn that, it's a good discipline. It to, is. To, and this is a good opportunity to do that yes. with so your that, kids. That, that's kind of the history of Advent. Even some that's, adults. That's kind, you know. of, that's kind of, you know, today though, actually, um, according to Jimmy Aiken, a Catholic Answers apologist, yes. we often kind of think of it as a penitential season, but he says that according to canon law, canon law 1250, do you want to read that or you want me to read that? The penitential days and times in the universal church are every Friday of the whole year and the season of Lent. Although local authorities can establish ad- additional penitential days, this is a complete listing of the penitential days and times of the Latin church as a whole, and Advent is not one of them. Yeah, right there in canon law. But I think we need to bridge this a little bit and talk and bring back and highlight a little bit of the almsgiving and, the, you know, taking care of the poor and donating things. I, I like that because it does prepare our hearts. It helps us detach from the worldly things so that we can make room in our heart for the Christ child when right. he comes. And it brings some balance. It does bring some balance. But we still need to kind of recapture that uniquely Christian attitude of joyful penance, the alms box, that even maybe the Meatless Friday, you know, do, do something that doesn't even have to be Meatless Friday. It can be something that you know is a, a little penance where you're giving something up for the Lord. Um, you but- know, there was something that I, we came across the internet last night, and I thought that was very interesting because sometimes, you know, the penitential season, and you're thinking of the blood of Christ that he shed for us, you know, and the, the passion. And in, this year in the White House, there are red Christmas trees, and I'm not talking decorate, green trees decorated with red decorations. They're red, dyed red. And this is because um, t- red trees are significant to the early Christian church. In Eastern Europe, the church would dye the trees red to symbolize the blood of Jesus in the resurrection. I think, you know what, and I saw a picture of that. That's it's beautiful. beautiful. And what we have to remember is the First Lady, Melania Trump, is from Eastern Europe. She's Catholic? Um, is she I can, Catholic? I can't I'm rem- asking. I'm, you know what? I'm not for sure. Okay. I'm not for sure, but she's okay. from Eastern Europe, so wow. she's kind of bringing in that Christian Christian heritage. Picture into the is beautiful. If you can go online and yeah. just Google Melania, maybe I'll Trump, post Red, that on our Facebook there page. You go. Let's yeah. do that because it is beautiful. It is, I, you it's sent well it done. Me. You it's sent it to beautiful. me, and I sent it on to probably another twenty people. I thought I that was cool, especially cool. timely with what we're talking yes. about today. So red Christmas trees to remind us of the penitential side of it. And red's a Christmas color, and yes. that's why I think we should keep it as a Christmas color and not do pinks and. You know, other yes. colors, but that's mm-hmm. my opinion, my mm-hmm. opinion. Right. Well, okay. So here we are talking about keeping balance. So, you know, get meatless Fridays, maybe the almsgiving, doing some extra charitable actions or giving right. for people this year, but also, and there's, that keeps the balance then so that we don't get caught up in the materialism. But what about decorating for Advent? You know, that is, where's that come in? You know, decorating for Christmas during Advent, that is like the, that comes up every year in blogosphere conversations. Mm-hmm. And so what do you do? Because I know when my kids were little, there well, was no all, way. Yeah. What's the problem? We're not supposed to decorate. Is that what well, they say? Well, you know, technically, I mean, if you follow the liturgical calendar, Christmas really technically it starts on Christmas Day, and right. then it goes past for the 12 days of Christmas or after Christmas. Right. We're in the season of Advent. But we do have the world around us. Our kids are exposed to the world around us. I would have had mutiny if I would not have put up a tree on Christmas Day. Plus, when you get a real tree, what kind of trees left are the Charlie Brown trees in the tree lot? Right, right. And, you and know, so, we, but, we don't want to conform, but the church has always actually kind of allowed itself to take secular parts of culture and make them holy, sanctify right. them, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of drawing secular culture right. to to the church. Right. So let, how do we do that? Well, you know, I think decorate, this is my opinion, I think decorating is fine. It's your intention of decorating, and you can in, 
you can decorate in preparation for the birth of the Lord Mm -hmm. and not, not necessarily for show and, you know, the decorator house look or anything like that. So, I mean, like one thing is you put up your tree, that's fine. Put the lights on, but leave the ornaments off. And, you know, we have a beautiful thing. Third Sunday of Advent is Guadete Sunday, which is Rejoice Sunday. And there have been times in the past we decorated on that Sunday. Oh, you know, because you're you're starting to feel the joy. It's rejoice. There you go. The joy is starting to come into play, like you talked about earlier. And what a great thing to teach your children. Yes, that's a great thing to teach your children. You know, and when kids are little, it's hard for them to contain that for the whole month, and Mm -hmm. that kind of gives them a little release of that joy at that time. And they're watching it happen around Mm -hmm. them. You know, so they're going, why, why aren't we? You know, they, yeah. it's hard for them to understand. You know, it's, it's hard for us to understand. I was just saying to my kids as we were decorating the tree the other day, which we have done. Um, I said, You're you know, one of those. Well, I'm one of those <laughs> because, you know, they were all home. And that doesn't what? happen when you have adult children very often. So, you know, I said, it's crazy because people used to wait till the 24th and decorate their yeah. Christmas tree the night before. I'm like, I want to enjoy it, you know. Well, and I think there's a sense of there's... People want to see some joy in the world right yes. now. There's it's kind of t- tough Bingo. times going out there, and so um, I just read on Good Housekeeping that they've done a study and Christmas decorations make people happy. <laughs> you know, and I can kind of understand right. it. Right. But we it's happy because it's joyful because to the Christian, the Lord is coming. Mm-hmm. He's coming as a Savior to save us, and that's why we're joyful. Well, and I part of the reason I want to decorate, especially I want the lights to be up in my neighborhood, is because. You know, I think of those that we've got so many nons, and that's a growing number of people who, N-O-N-E-S. Right, who just don't even know if there really is a Savior out there. So I think start decorating. Let I, them know. Let there be a light. Let my house be light if it's the only one in the neighborhood. And I, have, I have my thoughts on this. You know, I think that if every Christian put a nativity set in their yard, that would make a huge impact in the world. You outdoor, just challenged me. Outdoor nativity set. Just think about it. It, it, it can be a simple one, but every, if every Christian, and I remember, you know, it used to be you drive around neighborhoods, and that recently is 10 years, you would see nativity sets out in yards, and you don't seem like you used to. You have one. I have one, yes. and I love it, and I get a lot of comments on it, yeah. too. And I don't put baby Jesus out until Christmas Day, and the wise men are off, way off on my porch. They're coming. They're not there yet. And I move them every week. <laughs> you know, and that shows pe- people are going, where's, where's the baby? You know, kind yeah. of thing. there you go. You've got people asking. They're right. learning. They're, They're learning something. Questioning. And that's my thinking, too, is I don't take any of my lights down until Epiphany. And oh, I yeah. want people, I, I, my neighbors are probably like, those darn Magruders. So they have can... your neighbors said anything to you? <laughs> um, no, but my husband has. Oh. <laughs> years, no, ser- years ago, you know, he wasn't raised Catholic. So he's like, why are we leaving this stuff so up so So you evangelized long? your husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. But I hope other people, you know, I want people to ask ask me, why do those darn Magruders leave everything up so well, darn Well, and I long? just think when you put those out, people, maybe they may not ask, but they'll ask themselves why. Right. You know, start, you know. And I also think it's at nice to, you know, as a Christian myself, when I drive around, I think, oh, it's nice to know there's somebody else there, too, that's mm-hmm. enjoying the season mm-hmm. for for what it is, the yes. preparing for the birth of our now, Lord. Now, the one thing I have to say, in order to be balanced, we have to take down our tree at a certain time because they don't take the tree away after. <laughs> yeah, well, and if you have a real one, I always worry about fire hazards. Yeah, we, that, and we like real yeah. ones at our house. Despite yeah. the fact we've got tree allergies, we still like that smell. We're kind, yeah. of, we're kind of crazy that way. So, yeah, so I hope this has helped you, give you some ideas, and help you, encourage you to take that step. If you've been thinking about it and been a little timid about doing it, do it, do it. If you just joined us, like walked into the room kind of thing, <laughs> yeah, this is Catholic Women Now with Chris Magruder and Julie Nelson, and we're talking all things Advent, and we're just finished up talking about how to dec- decorating for Advent. Yeah, Chris, kind of keeping things in balance. Yes, yes. So, Well, so how do we say no during Advent? Oh, isn't that the big thing? Because mm-hmm. there's holiday parties mm-hmm. and there's Christmas concerts that it, are, yeah, you just, know. It's keeping with that idea of balance again. How do we do it? It's you kind know, of in, in, in our intention, isn't I it? I kind of call it the trimmings and the trappings, you know. <laughs> How do we stay out of the trimmings and the trappings, you know? Yes. I love that from Dr. Yes. Seuss. <laughs> yes, very good. You know, for me, it's um, asking the question, am I doing this because I'm willing to sanctify and renew my family what what's my what's my intention behind this why am i doing these things for the sake of connection for the sake of truth for appearances or yep i mean i think that's a big one too Mm -hmm. Um, what do other people think yeah yeah i think that's a big one and for women i think that's really hard and um, by the way we're getting this information from an article on catholicmom.com so we can reference that on the facebook page too if you want read it in, in its entirety but that is hard for us because we have these fears i think that kind of creep up in into 
our lives, you know, like the fear of um, what other people are going to think, the fear of, oh, uh, you know, um, I'm looking for my notes here. You know what? Here, here, the fear of what people think, the fear of missing out That's on that, right. that party or the fear, fear of failure. Yeah, fear of disappointment. Mm-hmm. Like my kids, I remember balancing that out. Are they going to think I'm less of a mom because I'm not doing what this mom over here is doing? Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? And you just, especially when you have little kids, you you do inadvertently run into that comparison game that happens you know yeah. you hear people talking even sometimes. motherhood just kind of really yeah. makes that more apparent which yeah. it's hard too but um but you know what god has better plans for us than that he has grander plans mm-hmm. for us and he wants us to use this time for refinement a time for drawing us more fully into his love and we've got to keep that in mind and i love what you said about is this the what's going to sanctify my family mm-hmm. That's a really good... Yeah, will good. it make my family holy? Will it give them the knowledge? You know, so many times the sanctification starts with knowledge itself. Yes, yes. And then it goes so, to the heart. Yes. So some of these things that you're doing, like not putting baby Jesus into the crib until, you know, it's time, until Jesus has actually come his birthday. You know, the kids, they're going to ask. Yes. They're going to ask. You're teaching your family that. And then they learn. Yeah. Just little and things. And they may not ask, but they'll just be so used to it. And then when they leave home, they remember it yeah. even more. Yeah. And all these things, you know, that, that we talk about doing, I mean, you, if you take one, if you yeah. take one and just and do one. And there's so many more other things out right. there, too, that you can find. We're right. just highlighting a few. I can tell you, when I was younger, Julie was part of this. I, I remember there were all these things that were presented to me, all these prayers, you know. And yeah. All, and, and I just, I, I got overwhelmed and I had to just step away, you know, finally. And, but then I found myself eventually doing all of these things you know, over time over time yeah. it's just it's just you know if you can pick little up one, by little one thing step by step yeah, more one and more thing to help sanctify our families and the thing is is there's always one more thing right, right. <laughs> there's always good things out there right so you so, kind of have to pray about what am i called to do well and i think one thing you have to do is lower your expectations mm. across the board for everything and and you tell you have to tell yourself give yourself permission it's okay to embrace the simple and there is beauty and simplicity actually simplicity is a virtue which i found out a few years ago and so it'll be much easier for you to breathe and take it all in right rather than trying to do all those maybe fun activities one of the best things you can do is pull out one of those christmas books and sit with your child take or your the grandchild time. sit them on your lap just nothing those, so pressing that you can't take five minutes to do that or to just sit have them sit on your lap i think they prefer that than going out in the cold and having you know whatever other or mom thing being you, busy running mm-hmm. around the house the other thing yeah. you want to communicate this to your family far and wide sit down with your husband tell them that this is what you'd like to do the kids out can understand it in your family let them know what the plan is so everybody understands so that you're not fighting a false expectation like they should know what you're doing right explain it to them so that they're not you know and if you're cutting something out so that they're they're not upset when it just doesn't right. happen that's right prepare them yeah which is the theme yeah. of the season right you know and i think if you pray over your calendar what things should i cut out yeah the lord will show you what well what's block okay. out dates you know make time schedule board game nights schedule confession as a family mm. and then pray over it. and then when you feel that tug to fill that block out time say a hail mary find a, a prayer that's something that you can kind of Bring your mind back to center. You know what I love is what you just said, going to confession as a family. You've never done that during Advent, Julie. What a great idea. Making it a penitential time, you know, keeping things in balance. I Um, want to say it's never too late because um, we're kind of latecomers to some of this in our family. And we started doing it after the kids were in college. And here's the thing about college kids. I found out you got to text them. I... (laughs) Don't email, don't try to call them. Text them ahead of time, like two weeks before they even come home and say, block out December 22nd, we're going to reconciliation, three o'clock, such and such yes. a church. And, yes. and and then it works. And if you can do it right before mass, we my family did that one time and it wasn't oh, during powerful. Advent. Yeah, you know, on a Saturday afternoon and then you go to Saturday night mass, it is, it is. Yes, it is very powerful. And it's funny too, because like with college kids, you think, oh, I'll t- we'll, we'll pl- they'll be home four or five days ahead of time. We're going to go to confession. I'll tell them, them uh-uh, that's too late. Mm-hmm. They've already got plans. And you know that the idea of cutting, you know, like we were saying, add one thing, maybe cut one thing out. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just that one thing, and you're going to begin to see kind of that true meaning of Christmas start to come into your heart more. One thing that really helped me is someone suggested to me that when you uh, when, take each one of your kids and ask them, what's the th- memory they remember about Advent or Christmas and your family of traditions. And it was surprising what my kids came up with. And she said, only do that one tradition and don't do add any more to it. Because every year you read something like, oh, that's cool. We'll do that or we'll do that. Just do what they remember. 
every I like year. That idea. I like what that. What was one that one of your kids? Oh, it was liked. so surprising. He says, "Oh, I love the homemade cinnamon rolls on Christmas Day." And he, the smell, you know, when oh, he yes. woke up, and they're not homemade; they're frozen. <laughs> That was what's the funny part. <laughs> That's okay. Pulling out the roads, right? right. That's right. It works. <laughs> Keeping it simple, girlfriend. That's right. That's right. Well, um, do you want to do the St. Teresa? Yeah. Do we have time for that? St. Teresa of Calcutta, where we're kind of right here at the end, her but quote. She has this beautiful quote about really keeping things simple. It says, don't think that love to be true has to be extraordinary. What is necessary is to continue to love. How does a lamp burn if it is not by the continuous feeding of little drops of oil? And I would just say, what are your drops of oil in your lamp this season? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Don't let your lamp burn out right That's during the Advent right. season with That's all right. the all the activities that can come along with it. And there it. are small things in everyday life to 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 live joy, generosity, the little good things, the humility, yeah. and the patience. Yeah. So I would say for balance sake, maybe add one thing if you feel like something needs to be added to bring in some joy and generosity. Yeah. Or and maybe take one thing out that just is the busy and be in the present moment. Mm-hmm. Be in the present mm-hmm. moment. And she ends with, "He is in you. Take care of your lamp, and you will see him." Amen. Amen to Amen. that. Amen. Well, this was great. It always goes so fast. It if you does. just joined us, we're wrapping up here as Catholic Women Now, and we're talking all things Advent. We're grateful for the support of Fred Haas Law Offices PC. Mr. Haas is dedicated to providing experience, personal, and highly responsive legal services. You know, accidental energies are just... Injuries are just that. They don't, you're not planning for them, and so you want somebody in a pinch, in a need, and Mr. Haas is your guy. He has um, many ex- much experience in recovering losses from a personal injury. Located in Des Moines, he serves clients throughout all of Iowa, 515-256-6301 or 888-338-6535, fredhaas.com, Fred double D, Haas double A. Dot com. Dot com. Let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Blessed Virgin Mary. Be with us as we approach the Advent season to have balance, to bring joy, to say no to the things that are not of the Lord this Advent season, so that we get closer to you and understand the true meaning of the season. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Catholic Women Now, broadcasting from the Mercy Mercy Live Up studio. Thanks for joining us, your prayers. And please consider supporting our mission if you could make a donation online, especially during this time of season of giving. The Iowa Catholic Radio Rosary is next. Now go do impossible things with God. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. And Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. CindySchulte.com. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder every Thursday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. On the radio voice for Catholic Women Now. 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app, Iowa Catholic Radio. Radio.